everyone, this is Professor Benjamin and I want to welcome you to week two of this course. So in this session we're going to talk about tragedy of the commons. And tragedy of the commons is probably the basis for all environmental problems um, throughout human history and will be into the future. So the idea of tragedy of the commons, uh, it was a phrase coined in the 1960s um, and it was based on what someone wrote in the 1800s. And you'll read about this in the PowerPoint and I'll walk you through it in a minute. But it's, it's definitely one of those things on how you keep the conversation going. So um, William Foster Lloyd wrote a paper in the uh, 1800s and then in 1960s, Garrett Hardin wrote a rebuttal to this paper that was written. Um, and he coined kind of what William Foster Lloyd was discussing as the tragedy of the commons. Um, so. Basically, what a commons is, is it's shared space. So shared space is all of the land, air, uh, the oceans, right? Everything that we share as humans. The other thing is, is that it could be small, right? So that's on the large world scale. But it could also be on a small scale, like a local park or a classroom at a school where everyone shares the same classroom or a bus. So it's very small, too. A commons is a shared space. And the whole idea of commons is the fact that we always tend in common situations think of our short-term interests rather than thinking of the long-term interests of that shared space. So take littering, for example. That's a good example, right? Is the fact that a lot of us will litter in a common area. We won't litter in our house, but we'll litter in a common area because we're looking for our short-term gain. And we're not thinking about the long-term interests of society. Um, we're not thinking about what that litter does to, number one, property value, to the fact that in a storm it washes off. We're thinking about my short-term gain right now, which is I don't want to carry this trash with me or find a trash can. And so that's the whole idea is that tragedy of the commons is this idea that we abuse common resources. So I want to just take you through a little bit. Right here is the PowerPoint. We're going to walk through that in a second. This is the main article you have to read this session, so make sure you spend time reading it. It's complicated, but I'm going to tell you at the end you're going to understand the article, and there's a lot of midterm questions on this article, so it's really important that you read this article. Um, and so the whole idea of this article is that rebuttal written by Garrett Hardin. And what Garrett Hardin says is that in order for... Um, the human race to stop people from abusing commons, we put into place technical solutions. And what do you, what do I mean by technical solutions? I mean, maybe we will um, put a desalination plant in um, instead of teaching people how to not abuse freshwater resources, right? Or maybe we um, we use mutual corrosion, taxes, or in his case, he talks about parking meters, right? We use these tools, these technical solutions. Or are we putting government agencies to help protect the environment because humans can't do it themselves. They need someone telling them, you can't do this or you're going to be fined if you do this. The other thing is, is that sometimes we use pr um, privatization, right? We privatize something. We say to another company, you take charge of it because as a whole, humans can't do it. Now, privatization has a lot of issues with it in terms of commons because most private companies are out for their own short-term gain their financial gain, and they could care about the long-term interests. Um, so there's a lot of different things, but what Garrett Hardin's saying is, is no matter what technical solution we put in place, we will never, ever, ever get to the true root of the commons problem because every technical solution also needs an extension in morality, meaning it needs some sort of educational piece with it to tell people, well, the reason that this has to be in place is because you're doing X, Y, and Z. And so that's really important for you to remember, okay? So this one also talks about, um, right here talks about invasive species because in this class, um, next week we're going to work on in week three a paper on invasive species. But a lot of times we import invasive species into an area um, for our short-term gain and we don't think about the long-term interests of society. Now, in this case, the Japanese dock, that came off during the um, earthquake that happened in Japan and then the, the resulting tsunami. Um, and so really nature played a role in that, not human intervention. But a lot of times humans really introduce species 
um, into society to maybe do something or you think a plant is pretty or we need to curb algae growth or something. And then what happens is that species gets out of control. And that's a really good example of a tragedy of the commons. Okay, and I give you a couple of those here, example of this. This reading here talks to you about privatization and how privatization is not the best thing for commons. And we have privatized almost all of our oceans to allow oil rigs to drill. But, of course, those private companies always look for short-term interest. Now, some of you might have been around for the big um, BP oil spill um, or the Exxon Valdez oil spill, right? Um, and that is the fact that, you know, these companies didn't put protective valves on their rig systems, right, on the, on the oil, um, on the well, and they didn't put these devices in because it cost too much money. And what happened was is that there was a massive explosion and all this oil leaked, and it has ruined the entire Gulf um, area. And, and these areas still have not come or have not kind of um, recovered or came back to homeostasis since. So it's something that you want to look at. Um, and here's another example of a, an invasive species um, article. So this is what you're going to do this week. So really this week you just have your introduction forum due by Tuesday, response post due by Thursday. But I do want you to start thinking about an invasive species that's a tragedy of the commons. You need to make sure that it's a tragedy of the commons species, meaning it was brought in for a human short-term gain. Because in week three you have to write a paper on an invasive species. Okay, so now I'm going to move to the PowerPoint, to the Tragedy of the Commons PowerPoint. Whoops, oh my goodness, my screen's going all over the place here. So let me get up here. Okay, so here is my Tragedy of the Commons um, PowerPoint. And we're going to understand a couple things here. So we're going to understand Tragedy of the Commons and explain the invasive species. So here are required. You've got to read that article. I know it's a lot of reading and you might get freaked out by it. A lot of reading. Okay, and we will revisit that, and you have to cite that in numerous assignments and the midterm and the final. So here it is. William Foster Lloyd, professor of political economy, published a series in the 1800s on two lectures on the checks of population. And he introduced that idea of what a commons is, and I go through what a commons is here. Um, and since he lived in the 1800s, he used this pasture scenario. And this is it written out kind of what I'm going to say. Um, but I want to show you right here. So here's the pasture scenario. And this is a common space. And what he's saying is, is that, you know, let's say we're all sheep herders. And I have so many sheep and you have so many sheep and another classmate has a bunch of sheep. And we put them in here, right? And we all have equal amounts. And um, we are all kind of living in this little space the shared area. And then all of a sudden, I have that inherent need for greed. You know, I go downtown, I shave my sheep, I sell my wool, and I get 50 bucks for it. And I go, wow, I can't believe I can get 50 bucks for shaving my sheep. And so what I do is I buy another sheep because I'm like, hey, I can make more money. And then you decide, oh, well, I see that she added a sheep and she got 50 bucks for it. I'm going to add three sheep, right? And everybody is looking out for their short-term gain, not the long-term interest that these sheep need grass to graze. So what winds up happening is, is that we look for those short-term gains and we all add sheep and we don't think about the long-term interest and we ruin the entire pasture because all the sheep eat all the grass and then guess what? There's nothing left for them to eat and then they all die off. So we've ruined it, right? We've ruined it because we looked out for a short-term interest rather than thinking about the long-term um, interest of the whole entire area. So William Foster Lloyd in this article proposes privatization, that you're going to take care of something if you own it. So he divides up the lots and says, this is what works. But we all know that privatization doesn't always work, especially now in a greed society, in a capitalistic society, you need to make money, right? And you got to make your shareholders happy, et cetera. So you're going to look for, for shortcuts to make more money. And you guys probably know this, if you rent, Right? I've rent from a slumlord before. If you've rented from a slumlord before, you totally understand this concept. They're going to give you the crappiest appliances. They're going to cut corners just so that they can make a buck, right? So privatization doesn't always work to help the commons. And then I kind of walk you through all of this, okay? So how can we solve tragedy of the commons as per Lloyd? And he said that privatization. Privatization is what works. Um, and it really doesn't, and I kind of just explain why. But then in, Garrett Hardin comes along in 1960 and writes a rebuttal, 
and says, whoa, 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 there's a lot more to this than what you're saying. Um, and he pinpoints a couple other issues. So his whole idea of Hardin's article is to explain the technical solutions that we have put into place to try and solve the misuse of commons. Instead, Hardin believes that we need to change our behaviors in order to solve commons problems. We need to understand our impact in order for the technical solutions to work, meaning technical solutions need an extension in morality. And so here's examples um, I give you um, of technical solutions that we've put into place, and they just really don't work. Um, some of them work. Now, the one that Hardin talks about the most in this article that works is mutual corrosion, is that we actually work best when we're fined. Um, and so he talks about parking meters in here, and I want you to revisit that part of the article. He talks about parking meters and how well they work. So mutual corrosion works to an extent. There's always going to be people who are trying to get away, right? They don't pay their parking tickets, or they could care less about the parking tickets, or whatever, right? But for the most part, most of us, if we're fine for something, we react to it, right? We change our behavior, and that is one of the main um main technical solutions that seems to somewhat work to, to curb um, comments. And so I want, right here, I kind of walk you through the issues with technical solutions. I talk about mutual corrosion. Um, and what do we need, mean by extension in morality? So this whole PowerPoint, I've, I've been very wordy in it because I want you to get the main points of the PowerPoint um, in terms of what we mean by this article. And it's really a mainstay, and we will revisit the article. So you have to read that article. You have to read it. Um, I print it, take notes, keep it with you. You're going to have to, in um, all of our assignments, you have to reference back to Tragedy of the Commons, okay? Um, and then next week, you're going to write your first paper on invasive species, and you have to tie back to Tragedy of the Commons. But um, as per the U.S. Department of Agriculture, it's a non-native um, or alien species under um, to a what is imported into a non-native ecosystem, um, and it will likely cause economic or environmental harm or harm to human health. Um, and so it's really important. Um, right now, the big one is the spider and lanternfly. Right, is that you hear all about the spider and lanternfly, um, and so it is an invasive species. It was brought in not directly for human short-term gain, but it was brought in. Um, it was transported for human gain, right? Is that we were transporting things from other countries and it came along with it, okay? So that's definitely. And here is when an invasive species is brought in to a non-native ecosystem for short-term gain, it can be considered a current day tragedy of the commons. An example of an invasive species um, that is considered a tragedy of the commons is when someone brings a flower from another country because it will add beauty to their garden, but instead takes over their neighborhood and competes with native species for terrain. Other examples are Asian carp and toothy pike. You cannot use those for your paper, so you're going to have to find something else. Some other uh, ones that are talked about a lot are bamboo in Philadelphia. Also, even the um, the python um, in Florida. A lot of people are actually um, the Burmese python. They actually pay people to hunt them um, because they're so invasive and they kill a lot of the local um, species in that area. Okay, so this kind of just gives you a brief summary of Tragedy of the Commons. I know it's a little wordy, but I thought I would kind of give you a little um, walkthrough of what we're going to cover in week two. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Don't forget you have your initial post due by Tuesday, I mean by Wednesday, response post due by Friday to your fellow classmate. Have a great week.